Greetings, ladies and gentlemen and students, and welcome back to the Library of Monsters. When we last left off, we left off with part one of what I view to be the sudden rise of the Godzilla community. And if you haven't seen that yet, I would suggest you take a look at that video first. Because if you don't, this one's not going to really make all that much sense or an impact to you. I'll give you a few minutes. I'm not going anywhere. Alright, everybody good? So if you're still here, I'm going to assume that you watched the first video. So let's get on to part two of our little flashback story. The fall of the community. So let's set the framework. I'm getting good grades at school, about to graduate, have a girlfriend, and a job. And in my free time, I help admin two of the largest Godzilla-based forums on the net. All is right in the world. I was spearheading the video game section over to the kingdom. Not a small feat, I might add you. So the Roost wanted to do its own thing for its site. Something that would have a butt-ton of fan interaction. Something that gave back to the forum users who were making the site what it was. So Brandon came up with the idea of the Daikaiju Desumachu. Ugh, yeah, I know, it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Nevertheless, this project was going to be a Mortal Kombat-like tournament where monsters will fight each other one-on-one. -on -one. People will vote on who they think will win, and that monster in turn will move on to their next round. One by one, the Kaijus will be killed off until there can only be a single one left remaining. Me, along with a handful of writers, would write a short battle story that would illustrate how the monster's battle went. And we would also make Photoshop banners for it. So, think of it as a precursor to the Toho Kingdom's Kaiju War Chronicles. Though, we let fans pick who won, and not base it on the writer at hand. You know, something that would never ever backfire on us, right? Well, anyway, we picked a handful of monsters from across multiple movie franchises. While most came for the Godzilla films, we got to use monsters from Gamera as well. Young Gary, Psychor, Gulala, Gorgo, and even Reptilicus were included in the fights. I'm still not sure why Reptilicus was, but hey, at least that sock puppet was getting some kind of love. So, all the combatants' names were thrown in a hat and pulled at random in order to pair them up for their battles. Now, if you know anything about the Godzilla series, you have super strong monsters and then you have your super weak ones. So, a lot of the fights that were drawn in the beginning were very one-sided. Manda vs. Fire Rodan, Destroyer vs. Kamakuris, and Gabber vs. the 90s Gamera are but a few of the extremely one-sided fights. There were others, mind you, but these were just some of the ones that I remembered. And then there were the ones that were very close. Too close. Now, it's here that I should preface and explain a few things. First off, you can see by the numbers there wasn't a giant amount of active forum users. While there were a lot of members, a lot of them were not really that active. Mainly because the internet was still fairly new and not everybody had it. And honestly, people's lives didn't revolve around the computer. They actually went outside once in a while. So voting wasn't really on their high list of tasks to do. So that explains that. Now I'll tell you how the vans would vote. You see, there was a section in the forum where the more active fans would cast their ballots. And all they had to do was just write down the match number and write the monster's name who they thought would win. That's it. They didn't have to write anything else. And it is right there where we messed up big time. Just stating who you thought would win and not back it up with an argument or any evidence? Yeah, that was a recipe for disaster. People tend to get butt hurt when you don't share their exact same opinion. They get even more so when you seem to pick a creature that they think would stand no chance against their champion. Like seriously, how dare you not back up your choice? That's just a slap in the face to a true kaiju fan. Ugh, like I'm serious about this. People were getting insulted and disgusted at folks. All because they thought that a completely pointless fight about two fictional characters did not go the way they thought it would. It was nuts and completely insane to me then, and even more so today as I remember upon it. This also was not helped by the fact that there was a certain branch of elitism that was beginning to happen in the fandom. You see, it was 2001-02 when the first Daikaiju Desumachu happened. It was the beginning of the Millennium series, and when a new Godzilla movie comes out, so do new fans. A generational thing was beginning to happen. The fans who were on the site in the mid to late 90s felt like the newer, younger fans that were coming in, they didn't know as much as they did. The more veteran ones got a big head and ego, and they threw their weight around. So the younger fans pushed back, as anybody would do. So now, a project that was specifically made for the site, that was intending to bring the fans together, was creating a rift in dividing people more so than it ever. 
It was inevitable that two strong and very popular monsters would face off several times in the tournament, and when you get a popular character, you got diehard fans. The two matches that stick out to me most was Biolante vs. Desu Ghidra, or Death Ghidra, I don't really care how you say it, and Legion vs. Space Godzilla. And oh my god, this was some of the stupidest crap that was happening here. Not only were people fighting with other people over their picks for this fictional fight, I might add, they were beginning to flame on one another. In fact, this was my introduction to a flame war, or flaming. People were trolling before the term even existed. There was so much more than a few name callings here. There was cursing, threats of violence, death threats, both racial and homophobic slurs. It was just everything short of doxing someone. It was completely and utterly stupid on every level that you can conceive. There was just no call for it. At all. But like I said, throwing in catalysts of generational fans, elitism, and not backing up one's choice for a proof or an argument, those were all ingredients to this overflowing pot that was happening now. So yeah, the mods and admins, we had our hands full. But it was only sticking a thumb in the breaking dam that was his fandom. You see, as you go further on the rounds, you start to knock off the weakling monsters. You start getting into the true powerhouses. The ones that have a lot of fans behind them. And with that, you get even stronger opinions. Opinions that are being flexed in the most inappropriate and demoralizing manner. We tried our best to keep order, but that was easier said than done. It wasn't like nowadays where people flex that band hammer so freely. We tried our best to let people have a platform in which to express themselves. But you give them an inch and they take a mile. So as we watched our proud baby project get mauled to death by bickering fans, something else was beginning to take place. You see, when people get angry at something on the internet, they tend to stay angry. And they end up lashing out in order to relieve all that malice they have built up. Well, a few of the uh, trollish like forum members decided to lash out at another fairly large Godzilla form, Ballard's Tokyo Monsters. Now, I really don't recall all that happened, but the gist of it is, a handful of roosters went over to the forum and created a bunch of havoc. This, of course, led Ballard's crew over to the roost, in which they retaliated in kind. So now there are multiple fights going on all at the same time. It didn't help that this was happening so late at night where most of the admins for the roost were asleep. Now, I don't recall all that was said, and sections of those forums no longer exist, but I can tell you it was very bad on everyone's side. I remember an admin for both the Roost and Tokyo Monsters were in a war of words, one which was soon stopped by a Roost mod closing and locking the thread. This of course the uh, Roost admin didn't like and he outright stripped the mod of his powers and booted his butt. So now not only do you have forum members from different forums get into fights, not only do you have people arguing about fictional fights, now you got admins and moderators fighting amongst themselves. To make a long story short, it took a few days to get everything back under control. More fights did come before the tournament's end were, big shocker, Godzilla won. Yeah, I know, that's a huge shock. A kaiju tournament that included multiple Godzillas and a Godzilla won? Who would have thought it? So, needless to say, my opinion on the fandom had greatly soured. I watched a tight-knit community rip itself apart because of fictional fights between giant monsters. It was disheartening. I witnessed something that I cared about get destroyed before my very eyes. It also didn't help with matters that my girlfriend and I had broken up, and I just started college, which was actually pretty difficult for me at the beginning. And I had to end up moving yet again. My life was thrown into a blender and someone hit the puree switch. I found myself visiting the forums less and less as the months went on, almost up to a year. School was now incredibly difficult for me and I didn't have the free time that I once had. Plus, I didn't need the aggravation of online life to conflict with my real life. So, after about a year, I gave Brandon and Anthony my walking papers. I stepped down, and that was a hard thing to do. I was no longer a part of either site. Websites and forums that I had helped to build and manage, I had to let it go. The passion for the fandom just wasn't there anymore. It was stomped on, grounded into the dirt. I honestly found myself at a crossroads. Yeah, I tried to fill it in with Ultraman and some other stuff, but it just didn't fill that hole the Big G left imprinted upon me. Moving in college had to take priority. So I left in order to shape my future, a decision that I still do not regret to this day. 
I had thought about coming back to the forums time and time again over the years, but by then, they had grown so gigantic. People I knew had moved on, and there was just too many people currently for me to even try to get to know. The forums had moved on for me as I had moved on from them. I had my time, though. It was now others' turn to take a swing and make something in the fandom for themselves. Now, you would think the Roos would have dropped the deathmatch thing, wouldn't you? But they didn't. Instead, they modified it to prevent what had just happened in the first one. Now people actually had to give good reasons why they voted the way they did. On top of that, they added a D&D system to it. Meaning that the admins would have the matches and play them out with dice and field power bonuses and other whatnots. This allowed even the underdog monsters to maybe pull out a win. Which did happen a couple times. I guess it all made the matches a bit more fair. But it still didn't stop the fighting. It was just as bad. But by that time, people came to expect that sort of behavior from other people on the internet. Gone were the leave it to beaver days of the innocence and respect. No, it was just like it is nowadays. People fighting about every little thing. Getting hurt over the smallest of word infractions and so forth. Sort of makes me sick a little bit. But the death matches, the battles went on for another few seasons without me. Season 2 was pretty much the same as Season 1, except you now had to defend your choices of your character and there were the D&D rules applied. Season 3 was tag teams, and Season 4 was pretty much a rehash of Season 1 except it had new roles and more monsters. After that, the Roost sort of died. It had changed into the Kaijuphilia, but a lot of the admins had gone their own way. Brandon started a family, CL went off to write fantasy novels and others did their own thing. Anthony, though, still kept his kingdom alive and it's impossible to argue that his site is not THE Godzilla website nowadays. I wish him luck then, and I still do. The man has a passion and a great group of people around him to help with the website. So that leaves us to today. For me, I find myself to be a fan of almost all movies. Monster movies though especially. Both critically acclaimed and universally panned. I graduated college and found a good paying job that takes up my time. I draw, read, and write in my free time of the monsters that I adored and watched. I bend over backwards to help family and friends around me and never utter a word of complaints. All in all, I'm content, if not a little bit happy. I mean, there's Godzilla movies coming out in Japan and America. More people are watching this stuff now than ever. It should be a great time to be a G fan. But, much like before, younger fans are beginning to fill in the holes that the older fans are leaving. And the mentality of uh, those people nowadays? It's a little short, to say the least. It's my way or the highway. Go kill yourself. You're, insert whatever slur you want to say. I'm going to expose you. Don't get me triggered. And so on and so on and so forth. You get the point. People can't stand when other people don't think their opinion is the one that actually matters. And I chalk that up to the whole social networking and online presence that people think they have to maintain in today's world. I'm just here to tell you guys, even though you think the Godzilla fandom is in the pits, because some people can't agree on whether Shin Godzilla is the best or worst Godzilla film there ever was, it's absolutely nothing compared to what it was back then. Today's fans are not trying to systematically destroy a fun what-if tournament that includes the fan posters and works of fiction. Fans today are not trying to destroy two forums that, at the time, had encompassed over two-thirds of the fandom. No. Fans like today are not like that. But, if you want to go down that road, be my guest, flip that coin, keep trolling each other, spamming, blocking, exposing, just keep it up. But the problem with that, it's not the fandom that's in the pits, it's you, and your attitude. You shape your community by your interactions. Give a bad interaction, and it multiplies and infests. Before you know it, no one's happy. But say what you will about the community today, I think it's stronger than it's ever been. Fans had stood up and created amazing works of art for the fandom. Matt Frank with his sick artist skills, John Droney and Daikaiju Legends with their amazing episodic kaiju videos, Rockstar BD82 and has got feature length Godzilla film anybody? And there's still more dozens and dozens of YouTubers that do those MDD battle renders of kaijus. The list goes on. Just because you have a couple of fans fighting and exposing each other, that doesn't make the whole fandom in the pits. It just sort of makes them sad that they're arguing about fictional things in a fandom about guys in rubber suits. I feel like I'm rambling here a little bit, but I hope you get the point that I'm trying to get at. I watched a time where every prominent Godzilla fan of the web, at the time, was embroiled in flame wars and stupidity. I watched a fan project 
get turned on its head and transformed into utter garbage. So your little leafy disagreements you have today? Yeah. It's nothing compared to that. You make the fandom, you shape it, you propel it. If you want to drive it into the ground because that gives you some sort of kicks or something, then just try it. But there are so many fans out there nowadays, I don't think you can. Your little pessimistic views, they don't really matter. Because you see, neither did my views when I lost the passion for the fandom. There were others that held out hope and kept a hold. And they helped shape it to what it is nowadays. And I congratulate them for that. They didn't lose their drive. Real life wasn't kicking them in the stomach with college troubles and having to move clear across the United States. I would like to think that if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for my struggles with college and my move, that I would have stayed on those forums. But honestly, I can't say for certain I would have. My passion was gone. But now, I think I regained a little bit of it, along with the passion for a lot of other monsters, both bad and good. So I ask you, any G fan that's watching this video, take a step back and think of what you can do to help other fans. Or in some cases, stop doing to help other fans. Be a fan or a casual viewer, it doesn't really matter. But above all, just be a human being. And with that little tidbit, for now, this part of the chapter of the Godzilla community, this part is finished and the library is closed. Tune in next time when we head back to our regular reading material. To all my viewers, have fun, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the flip side.